Oh my goodness. I don't know why I'm doing this. Please tell me if you can hear me. I'm glad you're all here. Uh, I, I decided to put on my big girl pants today and go live. So I'm hoping that some of you are able to show up last minute. This was a total last minute thing. To be honest with you, I actually had this live in mind and I kind of had my idea for what I was going to make and I was gonna do it before Thanksgiving, but then I wimped out. So today, I this morning I went live with um, a few of my friends for an online card classes event and I thought, you know what? I can do this. I'm gonna do this. So. Part of the reason for the last minuteness is I thought less people would show up and then I would feel less stress. So um, I am glad you're here. I just, uh, you know, I will get to a point where I give better notice earlier on, but right now, th this is what you've got for me. Going so far? Okay, Mike? Yep. Okay. My brother Mike is here, not so crafty Mike, so he helps me. So uh, I'm going to ask you a giant favor. I am sweating profusely, but um, I have a fan that my friend Kathy Zilski sent me, so it's here. But uh, whew, uh, I'm going to ask you a favor. What I'm asking is some grace because I've never gone live by myself to create. And I don't think I've really created like a full thing live with somebody else either. So this is, I, it shouldn't be that hard but I have issues, we all have issues, right? So I today thought I would um, share with you some ideas about a product that used to be really popular, but is new again. Um, one of the things I like about this industry is these companies try to um, bring us fresh ideas often. But years ago, there was a product that was very popular. Actually, when I was in the scrapbook industry, it was very, very popular and I loved it back then. And I'm very thankful because uh, some companies have kind of brought it back. And I thought a good thing to do would be to show you some creative ways to use this product that was old but is new again. I know a lot of you hold on to old products, so maybe you have some from years ago in your stash or from your scrapbooking time or whatever, or you can check out what is now new again, what has been brought back. Thank you for all the nice comments. I appreciate it. This is really hard. Um, okay, so what we're talking about, my brother's over here going, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is rub-on transfers. So anybody who was in scrapbooking back in the day knows that rub-on transfers were really big. They were really called rub-ons back then, but now I think more companies are calling them transfers. I bet Kathy Zilski is in the comments and she will remember from back in the day when we were both scrapbookers that that was a very big product. And I felt like there were a lot of advantages to the rub-on transfers. And the reason is you can put them pretty much on anything, whereas sometimes stamping on everything can be tricky. So this is an opportunity to be able to put your sentiment exactly where you want it. Now, one of the companies that I feel has kind of um, paved the way for these type of transfers to make a comeback is Hero Arts. So I thought I would share with you uh, some techniques that you can do with transfers. I will be using Hero Arts today because I feel like they're the ones who've kind of brought it back. Gina's here. Okay, she's the best at this. So Gina, thank you for being here. Anyway, um, I thought I would use the Hero Arts because they're kind of bringing those back, give you some ideas. I've prepped some things ahead of time, but I really don't know if they'll turn out with the techniques I'm showing. So I don't know if we'll have a completed card at the end or a close to completed but that's where the grace comes in. I'm, I'm just kind of winging this. So um, I will, I'm gonna step over here real quick and just add all of the, um, the supplies in the description so that you will have them. Let me get this real quick. I should have done this before, but again, here we go. Okay, so if you hit refresh in the description will be some of the supplies that I think I might use and some of the uh, supplies that I, you know, might, you know, I might mention. But one thing I did want to mention is it's that sales time, right? And Hero Arts has um, done a special exclusive code for me. It ends tonight at midnight, but it's worth checking out. Mike, can you put it on the screen? It. Let's see, it's gonna come up. Okay, 
There we go. So Hero Arts is very generous and they're offering those three products for free if you spend $35. And Mike figured out that the free products there is like a $30 value. 29 something. So you get those three things free with the code Jennifer23 through tonight. I have a link at the top of my list with um, like how you can get that um, get that deal. Just make sure you use that checkout at or that code at checkout. And, and the extra. yeah, the stencil is full size. The stamp set is a full four by six stamp set. And then there's the pack of little um, sticker gems. Hero Arts has on their website, you get the stamp and the uh, gems for free, but if you use my code, you also get that stencil. So that's $30 worth of product that you get free f with orders of 35 or more. I'm just throwing that out there. I just, the reason I'm sharing it is that was very generous of Hero Arts to do. So I thought I would share that with you. But anyways, that ends tonight at midnight. See, I should have done this earlier, but you know, that's what you get. So anyways, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, rub on transfers. So these are some of the transfers that Hero Arts has and I know they're going to be coming out with more because I've been begging them to come out with more. Do know that the things that I show you today will work great with any transfers. Uh, I know some other companies have been coming out with them and then if you have some oldie but goodies in your stash by all means you can uh, use some of those. So Hero Arts has had these for a while and what's nice about this is for example this right here I could never stamp and color this nice uh, on my own. So it's nice that I can cut these out and then rub them onto my cardstock and it'll look beautiful, right? It'll look like a true illustration. Um, I will show you how they work in a moment, but I just wanted to show you a mix. They have a good variety of things. Um, and what the, my favorites are always the ones that are in white because you can do white, a bright white on dark cardstock. Mike, do you know what time zone that ends? It's probably Pacific is my guess, because that's where Hero is. Pacific. Pacific, so midnight Pacific time tonight. Um, okay, so like in here, these are all white in here, but notice that the one on the front isn't what's it, only, the only things in it, there's others in here too. So I really like that there's multiple sheets in here. So there are these ornaments. There's lots of different options here, like this one, is the black version of the white. So you have the two options. Wait a second, where is it? Here it is. So there's a lot in these packs. Don't think that just what's on the front is, is what's included. Sometimes it is, sometimes there's additional ones. So there's lots of these. Here's a holiday one that's really fun because it's got all the different colors. But you can you read the description on the different ones to see what is actually included. Today, I thought I would share with you a technique that I did briefly in a recent Hero Arts uh, event. Hero Arts has great events online. I know they have one coming up in January on mixed media. The reason I really like their events is they're very affordable. They're like 20 or $30 and you get to take a bunch of classes. And you can either buy the products that are gonna be used in the class like as a bundle, or you can make do with products you have, which I think is great because not everybody can afford the events where everything's included and that can be expensive. So I really like the Hero Arts events. They had a holiday one a few weeks back and I was asked to do like a mix it up of all the different products and just share some ideas. And this is the card that, one of the cards that I included. So I am going to show the technique I used here, but I'm gonna do a different design. So we will be using the same rub on transfers for my first example, and then do a fun technique with it. So this is where, kind of the background is where we're headed. Okay, so we're gonna start with these um, snowflakes. One, I'm going to be using a big piece of this as a background. But let me just show you because I'm not gonna be, well, actually I will later. So I'm going to be using a big chunk of this as a background. You can see there are two included and then a little stick to do the transfer. You can also use a bone folder for this. And I will mention um, another, yes, I'm gonna mention another way that you can transfer them in a moment. But first, let me get, oh, I gotta find my trimmer. See, this is where I'm not prepared. Actually. I couldn't have my trimmer sitting out because there's no room on my desk for it. Anyway, so I am going to cut a piece off here. Let's see, I'm gonna make it kind of go sideways. So let's see, I'm gonna do this about four and a quarter inches wide. 
we're gonna actually end up going smaller than that. But let me just, yeah, that's good. Okay. I am going to apply a large piece of this onto a piece of white cardstock. Now you could put this on colored cardstock, like on a dark navy, and these lighter, these colors would stay light on top. But I wanted to show you a fun way to give you even more impact and kind of like a, um, uh, kind of a shadowy look. It gives a look of dimension, but it's super smooth. So what you do is you remove this release paper from the back of the rub-ons and you can see it looks, it, they're kind of sticky there. Now, if you touched this onto like your fingernails, you'd have a rub-on transfer on your fingernails. If you touched it on your desk, it would probably transfer there. So I am going to lay this onto a piece of plain white cardstock here. This is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, but I'll trim it down in a moment. So I'm gonna lay that down on here. Now there are a few ways you can transfer the rub-on from the clear carrier sheet to your cardstock. One is using the little popsicle stick that it comes with. The other is using a bone folder, which is what I usually do. I just kinda rub all over the surface. Now another thing you can do is just put this right in between the cutting plates on your die cut machine, run it through and it'll squish it down and it'll do the transfer for you. Um, so definitely can put this between your cutting plates of your die cut machine and it'll squish it down and transfer it. I don't know. I'm too lazy to get my die cut machine out. So this is what I'm doing. This is what I usually do. I usually use the back end of a bone folder, but really anything you can use like the edge of a gift card. You can use the edge of like an ink pad here and transfer that way. Anything that will just put some pressure on it. Now, when you go to peel it off, you want to go slow. See, there's some dots there. Can you see that? There's like a little dot right there that didn't transfer. So I'm gonna lay it back down and press more in that area. You wanna make sure you get, oh, that's on the edge. You wanna make sure there's nothing left on this sheet when you pull it away. So I like to do this kind of slow. There you go. And now you can see it's all transferred. Then what I like to do just to be sure it's all stuck down is I take that release paper that we peeled off in the beginning, lay it over and just really press that down. And now we have this great transfer on here. And it looks like pattern paper. I mean, it is buttery smooth. I love this. So if I had done this on dark cardstock, those would stay light. But I like to instead put dark ink over it. Now this is where I haven't prepared. Let me get my ink stand. Hang on, I'm coming back. So here's my ink stand because I can't do any ink blending without an ink stand. And I'm gonna grab some Hero Arts inks. Let's do these. Now you could really do any dye inks here. Gina Kay's dye inks would work, Distress inks would work. I am in love with Hero Arts blue inks, so I'm choosing to use that. Hero Arts core inks is actually a line of ink um, that they've created that's, some are dye inks and some are hybrid inks, but the whole point of it was they were the most beautiful color options and that's why they did a mix of dye and hybrid and they work really well here. So really any dye ink would probably work well here. Let me get my, my Misty out. I have my Misty here. The only reason I have my Misty out here is because I have stuck in it my Waffle Flower Grip Mat. Love that tool. It's basically like a large stamp. It's like a large solid stamp. So it will hold your paper down as you do inking or stamp on it or whatever. So I have my Waffle Flower Grip Mat inside of my Misty stamping tool. Um, and I have links to all this below. If you don't see links in the description, hit the refresh and you'll be able to see it. All right, so I'm gonna stick that in there. Again, you don't need to use a Misty. I'm just putting it on that sticky surface because that's where my sticky surface is stuck right now. So how are everybody good? Mike is also posting as my name a link to a list. If you click it, it'll pop up a list with pictures of all the different supplies and that might be easier to kind of visualize um, the different supplies and how to find them. Just one place. Just one place, all of them in one place. Everybody good? Okay, so I am going to do a resist technique over these transfers. Remember, as I said, you could have, if you wanted to, applied or done like a dark cardstock and then put the rub-ons on top 
or done an ink blended background and do the rub-ons on top and they would show up beautifully. But by doing the rub-ons first and putting ink on top of it, you'll see that um, you get kind of like this little halo that's really beautiful. I am using an Altenew large ink blending brush. The reason I'm using this is I like this big brush when I'm doing large backgrounds. I find it much easier to blend with and faster to cover a large surface, but you could use whatever blending tool you may have. So I'm applying the corn flour towards the bottom. This is just like, a, I don't know, like a, reminds me of kind of a light denim color. Now, if you don't have a sticky surface, no worries. You could do this directly onto scrap cardstock or whatever work surface you like, like glass. But you can see I can apply this ink over this and the cardstock's not going to move around on me and I don't get fingerprints because of that grip mat. And one of the things I like about the Waffle Flower grip mat, I think I saw Nina in here. I'm hoping she's, Nina is the owner of Waffle Flower. Yes. One, of, one of the things that I like about this is it seems to actually stick better over time. It's like the more you love it, the more it loves you. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. So I'm doing this lighter cornflower blue about halfway up, close to halfway up. And you'll start to see, see that little bit of white halo around the transfer? That's because the transfer has a little clear edge to it that when you apply to cardstock, you don't see. But when you put ink on top, you do see it. And it makes that kind of get more dimensional look to it. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that makes sense. All right, next I'm gonna to go to my darkest color. This is one of the most beautiful blues in the whole wide world. Nina is here. Nina's the, the one who, uh, she owns Waffle Flower and she has these sticky mats in every size you can imagine, which I think is fantastic. Okay, so indigo is one of the most beautiful blue colors. Let me, put, let me just put it onto cardstock so you can kind of see. I'm looking around for a scrap here. You can see that is just a beautiful bright blue. If you're looking for cardstock, by the way, that matches the Hero Arts Indigo well, Lawn Fawn Blue Jay. It's a, it's a nice match. That's like a bright navy. It's, it's just great. And I like to mix and match my brands. It makes me happy. Okay, so at the top, I'm gonna put Indigo. And I am not putting much effort into getting a good blend here. This is just putting ink down. I. I'm a believer that nothing needs to be blended wonderfully. First of all, a lot of these quality inks will kind of soften and blend on their own. So you really don't have to put that much effort into it. And second, once you've created a blended background and put other things on it, people aren't gonna see if it's not blended well. And also, if you do a card and it's not blended well and you give it to someone and they say, hey, they call you and say, hey, great card, but you didn't blend well. You just never send them a card again. That's my. That's my theory, right? All right, so in the middle here, I'm doing Summer Sky, which is like a bright middle blue. And I thought that might be like a fun blend between the cornflower and that indigo. Now you notice that my cornflower came farther than like a third of it. It came to like here. And my indigo I blended to about here. That's because I want colors to overlap. The more you overlap colors, the better you're blending and you can spend less time you know, putting in the effort to blend. Now I want this to be a little bit darker up here, so I'm gonna go in more with more indigo here. All right, tell me, am I doing okay? People are laughing. Oh, they're la are they laughing because I said to never send them a card again? Or did I do something embarrassing? Yeah, <laughs> never again. Never again, never again. All right, now I wanna go, what? Yeah, Dana said, well, you're off the list. Yes, it's true. Off the list, for sure. I thought I'd do a little bit more dark ink up there. I'm trying to find my nautical. Yeah. Nautical is a Hero Arts navy that's almost black. So if you want to go really dark on the edge, I'm just going to put a little bit up here. So that just kind of blend that out. See how I'm overlapping everything, and that'll give me more blend. Now... Let's peel this off and there you can see our blending and then I'm going to take a dry cloth I'm going to take a dry cloth and just buff off the excess ink from where the rub-ons transferred so what has happened here is 
the rub-on transfers are their original color. You can see their, you know, that light blue. Let's find one that matches up here. Well, um, let's see, right here. So you can see how those blues are similar between the different snowflakes on here and on here. However, we have the dark color around it here. And because we did the rub-on transfer first and did ink on top, we get a resist effect. And you, because of that, see that little bit of white halo? That's the clear part of the transfer. And it gives that fun little white halo around the rub-ons. If you didn't want that white halo, just do your blended background and then do the transfer on top. But I love this resist technique. So you could put down the rub-ons, press them down really well, and then do like watercolor over it. You can do anything that you would normally do resist with like a heat embossed image, you can do with the transfers. Isn't that beautiful? I love that coloring. So I'm going to quickly, I'm slow, just to warn you. I'm gonna to try to turn this into a card. I did prep some things ahead of time, so hopefully it's possible. First, I'm gonna trim this down to be four by five and a quarter. I'm using my Tim Holtz trimmer. I usually use the rotary trimmer, but honestly, it's been upstairs for a while now, and I've been too lazy to bring it down. So that's the only reason I'm not using it. So I trim that down to be four by five and a quarter. And then I have a top folding note card here. Yes, never, you know, here's the thing. We spend a lot of time on this, these cards, right? And if somebody's gonna critique them, they just don't get it. They just don't get what we do. So um, hope I don't think anybody would, honestly, but who knows. All right, I have some Gina K adhesive here. I usually use liquid, but I can't find my liquid adhesive on my desk and I found that. So this is that's what I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna do it this way. A lot of people ask why I always make top folding note cards. I almost always make top folding note cards. That's because I like how they look when they stand on display. They don't fall over as easy. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. So there we have our background. I think that's beautiful with that little white halo around it. Isn't that blending just, you know, blending doesn't have to be perfect. And again, you could do any type of dye ink over this. You could do blues and pinks, purples and pinks, it'd be fun. Okay, so there is our background. Now I did, let's see if I can find it. I did a little prep off screen because let's be honest, I was afraid. So anyway, I have this Hero Arts Winter Town Cheer Bundle. Uh, one of the things I like that Hero Arts has been doing lately, and I think, um, I hope more companies take the lead because it's less packaging. They have the, uh, you can buy the stamp by itself, or you can buy the stamp and the die bundle, and it comes in the same package. So they're together, or you can just buy the stamp set. I, I just think that's a, a innovative way of doing the bundles. So this is what I'm using. I actually ended up with two of these bundles. So at the end here, Mike is gonna um, pick somebody from the little comments here to win this. But I thought I'd show you the new set here. So I off screen did some silver heat embossing of some of these little houses and the little smoke from the chimney and some little trees. And I used the coordinating dies to cut them out. And this is what I came up with. So it's just silver heat embossing die cut. And I glued this back one down with my Gina K Connect which I just found, and my and some foam tape. So there's some dimension to those. All right, these uh, tran these are Hero Arts transfers that we're using today. So if you just came in, I'm just showing how this product that was out a long time ago that would be considered old by some standards is becoming new again. These are new ones from Hero Arts, but if you have old ones in your stash, by all means, you can definitely uh, use use those for these techniques. So I did the silver heat embossing on white cardstock, did the die cutting. Uh, for that shape there, let's see if I can find it. For this little kind of globe looking shape, I used the Hero Arts Arches stacking dies. Um, there are a lot of companies that do stacking dies. I know um, Waffle Flowers, Spellbinders, um, Simon Says Stamp, they all are great 
uh, options because there's lots of different sizes in them. Uh, I've always liked tear arts because they seem to put a lot in. They call them infinity dies. So I've used like their circle and square and rectangle infinity dies for years. They have some ornaments, they have trees, lots of different options. And you can see how many are in here. All of them are different size. You can layer them together. I just chose one from here. Normally these I have um, like this die set I would reach for often. So I actually tape into my cabinet door, like on the inside of my cabinet door, a magnetic sheet and I have these on here. So whenever I want to use this shape, I just pull them off that magnetic sheet and they're ready to go. So this will get a home in my cabinet eventually so they don't all fall around like this. But you can see they go down to tiny, teeny tiny sizes, lots of different size options. So I did die cut one from like a middle size and I glued my little town on it. Now I am a big fan of dimension. Um, like Laura Basson says, dimension is life. But I feel like um, sometimes folks think that, I don't know, there are different ways you can add dimension. You can use foam tape, right? Um, I don't use a whole lot of foam tape. I do sometimes because I find it's expensive. Uh, I find that sometimes, like if you get a really inexpensive brand of foam tape, it actually yellows and comes brittle over time. So some cards that I made like 10 years ago, that's kind of falling apart a bit. So um, I, I find that what I like to do is stack die cuts and that will give you the dimension. I do this in almost all of my videos. One thing you can do to save is to use either scraps for those layering pieces or do what I did here. I die cut from the center, no one will ever know it. So let me show you. I have here just a solid arch, but I want dimension behind it. So I die cut two more arches to glue behind it. Well, I needed the little smoke tree and trees. So I just die cut that from the center. Nobody will ever see that. So if you're going to layer large pieces together for dimension, you can die cut from that so less is wasted. Especially if like, say you wanted to do like a silver mat for a rectangle piece and you wanna use that silver um, cardstock for the mat, but you don't wanna waste that big piece of specialty paper, die cut some things from the center before you glue it together. I'll take another one of these and just glue it on top. And then another bit of glue, and then this on top of that. And so now there's dimension on this, and I was just using some scraps. Another thing you can do is, for example, after I use this transfer, this packaging, this paper in here, it's thicker, right? Most of the packaging is a thicker paper. Die cut from that and glue that for your layers. Nobody will ever see and it's a great way to just kind of recycle. I know not everything we do is like the best for from recycling or whatever, but we can make those little efforts, I think. So this will get glued in the center here, but first I need to add a sentiment. And I thought I'd show you one of my other favorite rub-on packs. So this one is called Holiday Message Strips Hero Transfers. So in this pack you have the black rub-ons with white letters and you have white rub-ons with black letters. So this would be like a white, let's see, like you can see here, like a white strip with black letters or you have the black strip with white letters. And this makes it um, really easy to create a sentiment, sentiment strip very quickly. Somebody asked, will all uh, foam tapes yellow over time? I don't, honestly, I don't know. I know what I used to use did, uh, so I'm just very cautious. But I feel like if you get a high quality foam tape, for example, um, lately I've really liked Gina Kay's um, strip, what are they called? Shaker strips. It's narrow, thick foam tape, and it's very high quality. Uh, I think they're made by ThermalWeb, who does great products. Those I would trust. But sometimes you have a lot of dimension you wanna do, and it's just easier to use stacked die cuts. Also, um, if I have a big background, I don't want to put just like three strips of foam tape on the back because that might get squished in the mail. I do mail all of my cards. So by doing solid layers of paper, that won't get squashed, if that makes any sense. But if I do want foam tape for say a shaker card or just to be quick, 
I like using um, Altenews foam tape. I think that's a good one. And then the Gina K shaker strips. I also like that those two brands, like the release paper comes off really easily. It drives me crazy when it doesn't. And you can also tear it or cut it without it becoming like stretching or becoming gummy. So those are some of the brands that I like. Anyway, okay, so I thought I would add a simple sentiment onto here using one of these Hero Arts transfers. Now, there are a few different options we can do. What I'm choosing to do is, I think I'm gonna do black so it stands out more, and I noticed that the Merry Christmas fits very nicely at the bottom of that, so I thought I'd go with that. Yes, I mail all my cards, and Tammy, I bet you've gotten a card from me. I think I've sent you cards before, but I do mail cards. You don't have to. Hey, it's whatever makes you happy, but I, yeah. I send a lot of cards out. So this is what I do when I want a single transfer from a sheet. I've got the release paper still on there and I just cut out what I want. Now what I plan to do, haven't done it yet, um, for now I'm just putting them back in the packaging, but what I really want to do, eh, I just, maybe I'll talk Lila into doing it for a little money to spend on crochet yarn. I want to do um, a binder, like an office binder, and have uh, just, sleeves, the clear sleeves in it, where I can slide these in. So I'll have a binder full of the rub-ons so that I can easily slide them in and out and not have to worry about putting them in the tight packaging. So I'm hoping that um, that will work well for me. If I do that system and it works, I will be sure to share it in the future. All right, oh yes, Pear Blossom has a great foam tape that it, you can kind of move things a bit and then it holds tight, kind of like a, a tape runner like this Gina K one. Um, it is Pear Blossom who has that. Um, somebody asked, do the cardstock layers make your cards heavier and cost more postage than foam tape? Possibly, possibly, it depends. Um, but I, I put so much dimension on most of my cards that I usually need the, um, and I put it in like a, what do you call that? Like a cardboard kind of mailer that they usually cost like a dollar something to mail. And for me, that's worth it. For me, that's worth it. I, I know some people get frustrated with the postal service raising prices, but it's cheaper than me getting on a plane and hand delivering. So I'm happy to support that. And I want them to stick around because of the, um, the hobby that we do. Now, another thing that I can do is I, some of my cards, like my bulkier cards or heavier cards, I will put in uh, like a box. I send out products or gifts or hand deliver. But the it just, I don't know. I feel better about using the recycled materials over, um, over using the more foam tape. I don't know. You know, we're all just trying our best. But yeah, you could use a bubble mailer. Um, ridge, ridge and mailers are good. This is a bigger one. This is for like a five by seven card. I will add at the end of this to the description below the mailers that I use. Um, you can get them at target.com, actually not in the stores, but on their website. And also there's some uh, available on Amazon. So I will link to those below. But like if I had a five by seven card, this is what I would mail it in. And yes, it does cost a little bit more to mail. But after I put so much love into my card, I want it to arrive nicely. So I do have a video where I show, um, it's one of the Since You Asked videos. Um, if you search on my YouTube channel on Since You Asked, I'll add a link later. There is a video where I talk about how I go about mailing my cards. And so I'll talk about the mailers in there and can give you some information. Okay, so let me get back to this. I did cut out one of the rub-ons that I wanted. And I still have the release paper on the back. You don't want to take, you don't want to peel this off of the release paper and cut it because it's sticky. You don't want it to stick somewhere you don't want it. So I have the release paper still on there. And I chose to use the black line with the white letters, but you could do white with black. And I'm going to use that next time, I think. So here's what you do. You, re you remove the release paper and now you can position this anywhere you want on the card and this is easier to do if you're not shaking because you're going live and people are watching you craft so um, I'm pretending nobody's here and I'm just gonna lay this where I want it and then we can rub that down using a bone folder you can use again a credit card that popsicle stick it comes with I do recommend keeping your finger on the clear portion as you're, trans as you're transferring because you don't want it to curl up on you. 
you know, as you're rubbing that down. So I'm going to press this down, slowly peel up and make sure it's all transferred. Look at that. So easy. You're, and you're not messing it up. Like I, if I assembled this and then stamped it afterwards, if I messed it up, I'd be frustrated, but this just easily applies exactly where I want it. And you could put that onto, let's see, are they clear? Let me see. No, it's so it's white. So you could put this um, rub on on pink cardstock and you'd end up with that black frame with white letters and then the pink would be around it. And yes, it does go on like butter as Kathy says. All right, so to finish this off, I have my Gina K Connect in the fine tooth or fine tooth, fine tip bottle because that is life. To Laura Bass and Dimension is life. To me, it's Gina K Connect. And I'll just place that right in the center of our card. Yeah, go up, center up. There we go. All right. So that, you know, I, for me, that's a, that's a pretty simple card. I don't, everybody's standard of clean and simple is different. Uh, you could go and add some little gemstones to the background, but I really think that little bit of shadowy look on kind of around that little white halo around the snowflakes is really fun. So, and now keep in mind, I did blue ink over it and there were blue snowflakes. You could do the snowflake transfer, which is blue and silver, and then do like pink ink over it. And the blue transfers will still stay blue. You just have pink around it. Hi, Kelly Taylor. Oh, I love my friends. So many great people here. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Um, so there's our first card. So just to remind you that you can use any of these transfers as a resist. So these white backgrounds right here, you could do color. I'll show you what it looks like. This is the patterns. So you could do color over that white. You would have bright white with that color around it. And that's faster than heat embossing. It's very smooth. It won't give like a kind of splotchy result. It just works really well. All right, so that is my first card. Now the next one I haven't thought through as much, but I thought I'd demonstrate a few things. And by the way, I will take pictures of these and post them probably tomorrow because after this, I'm going to do a Christmas puzzle with Lila. So um, I will share pictures. And big tip, match up with a color envelope. Color envelopes will cost you more than plain white, but I feel like, look at how that just really pops against it. And you put all this time and effort into your card. If you feel like you can make the investment in colorful envelopes, I recommend it. Um, most of my colored envelopes are from Gina K Designs or Simon Says Stamp or Tailored Expressions. Those are three crafty companies that have a lot of great colors of envelopes, but look at how that just matches beautifully. So yes, this blue, the blue snowflakes for anybody catching up, was a transfer, a rub-on transfer from Hero Arts. You can see how it's the blue and the silver and I did it on white cardstock and I put ink over it. All right, so that's our first one. The next one, I'm not so sure about yet. We're gonna figure this out. Okay. And if you have questions, please put question really big and Mike kinda hits me over the head to remind me. Where did you get all your color envelopes? Color envelopes, Gina K Designs, Simon Says Stamp, Tailored Expression. Sometimes Cards and Pockets, which is a website that just sells like invitation stuff, there are, they are pricier there because you buy them kind of like an individual, you buy like one, two, three, whatever envelopes. Um, but the Gina K, Simon Says Stamp, Tailored Expressions have packs of colors. And I'm just, I'm a sucker for colored envelopes. I the And the other reason I recommend like buying from there as opposed to like going on Amazon Amazon and buying bulk of a hundred is these are thicker. I mean, this is super, super thick envelope, super high quality. So I know that the envelope won't get torn up if you put a card with dimension in it. It might a little bit, but it's gonna hold up better. It's not like a flimsy envelope. It's a really good quality envelope. I think this one might be uh, Blue raspberry or something from Gina. I think that's what it is. If Gina's still here, maybe she can tell me because I have them labeled over there, but it's over there. Okay, next I thought I'd show you. I talked about before that you can use rub on transfers on things besides cardstock. So one advantage is, oh, May from Altenew is here. We were just talking about Altenew earlier. 
Now, I showed you that you can put rub-on transfers exactly where you want it, right? You could even, say you have some die cuts um, kind of like staggered on top of each other, you can lay the rub-on down and press it over all of the layers and then your sentiment kind of will fall over the layers. Uh, so that's one advantage, advantage of transfers is you can place them exactly where you want and the color will stay true. Or you can do the um, resist like I did here. But you can also put rub-on transfers on things besides just plain cardstock, like acetate and vellum. As many of you know, sometimes it can be really frustrating when you want like a bright black image on acetate. You know, you could use stays on, but it doesn't always go crisp. Uh, you could use black heat embossing on it, but sometimes your acetate will warp if you heat it. Um, they're just, as you know, it can be tricky to do. It's same thing with vellum. So I thought I would show you how one of the advantages of transfers is that you can use them on these slick surfaces. You can use them on fabric. I've used them on felt in the past. Again, this is kind of what's old is new again. I used to um, use them on felt in, the, in my past scrapbooking days. Here I'm just making a vellum note card. This is Hero Arts vellum. If you want a good quality vellum that is thick enough that you can pretty much make a card base out of it, um, I recommend either Hero Arts vellum, Altenew vellum, or Simon Says Stamp vellum. Those all are great, thick quality vellums. All right, am I frozen? Somebody said I'm frozen. I wanna make sure I'm not. I'm hoping I'm not. not okay. I'm gonna keep going, hopefully I am not frozen. Let's do some of these white transfers. So these are some white holiday transfers here. Hello from France. All right, I wanna be in France. All right, so in here, this one is um, the words for Old Holy, oh Holy Night, I might use that one. Here we have, uh, this is music, and it's like a music sheet, it has and text, so there's some music, there's some text, it has the definition for festive in there, joyful. This one, you know what, I'm gonna show you it in the black. I'm not gonna use the black, but I'm gonna show it to you in the black if I can find it. I had it here a minute ago. I'm gonna show you in the black so you can see it, but I'm gonna use the white version, okay? So this is the exact same, but in the black. So in this pack, we have, move these. We have the text or the kind of vintage text for Oh Holy Night. Here's the uh, music notes and some definitions. This one is one that's great because you can cut out the different sentiments and add them where you want. And there's this big background that you can do just straight up. Here are little elements that you can cut out. Here's a little tip. If you get um, clear plastic or glass bulbs, you know, Christmas ornaments or silver metallic or anything, you can use the rub-ons to personalize it. So you can just put these right on the side of the bulb, put the rub-ons on it, and then you're kind of adding that handmade touch to ornaments that you can give as gifts. Years ago, I did a video showing how to do alcohol inks on ornaments. You could do that technique and then do rub-ons on it. It's so much easier than stamping on you know, something dimensional using the transfers. All right, and also in here is a Christmas Carol. So these are nice because you can do, if you like mixed media, fantastic for mixed media because you can do all your inky backgrounds with texture and whatever you want and then put this on top and they'll transfer nicely. All right, so I'm gonna use the white version of that. Let's see, I think I'm gonna use the music one on one. This is where I'm going rogue, I have no plans. Well, kind of, but not really. So this could all end poorly. Let's see here. I'm gonna pick out the portion I want. When I'm not talking, it gets really quiet in here. How does Jennifer catch specific questions? Is her brother alerting her to them or is she just grabbing one when she looks? A little bit of both. He'll hit me over the head. He'll like wave frantically or I just look up. I haven't been looking up much, but I haven't seen question in big letters. If you do question in big letters, I'm more likely to see it. Let's see, I'm gonna do. No, I can miss things. Yeah, he can miss things too. Every once in a while he'll run out and um, check on Lila for me. My husband's hitting golf balls this afternoon. All right, so 
So I have trimmed down this. Now keep in mind, I still have these little strips. I am saving these. I will not throw these away. This is a great little border on the side of a card, on a strip of cardstock. Lots of different ways you can use them. All right, so let's look first at the acetate. Now Hero Art sells these, they're folded acetate note cards. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half, super thick, super thick acetate, and they come scored and folded. I'm gonna flatten mine out for this. Um, if you uh, don't have acetate note cards like this from Hero Arts, you can also buy full sheets of acetate, which is just clear, thick material. I really like Simon Says Stamp has heat resistant acetate. The nice thing about that is it's thick, and you can heat emboss on it and it can withstand that heat. It does cost more when it's heat resistant. So Simon also sells non-heat resistant that costs less. But really, if you look at packaging, a lot of your thicker packaging can be used for something like this. All right, somebody asked, do rub-ons need to be sealed when put on ornaments? I haven't in the past and I've never had problems. Um, I used to work a long, long, long time ago some of you, I know Kathy Zilski will remember this. Jana Millen, Jana's here. Jana will remember this. Um, there was a company called Autumn Leaves and I did work for them a long time ago and they had beautiful rub-on transfers. I mean, just gorgeous. A lot of them in white and I would do those on ornaments and I've never had any problems, so. All right, yes, I'm using the white transfer this time. So this time, this is the music notes. You can kind of see it there. And if you look closely, can you see there's like a little white halo, or sorry, clear halo around it? That's what gave me that fun resist uh, shadow before. Now I'm gonna take this and lay this as best as I can on the front of the acetate, and then transfer this down. As I mentioned before, you can transfer this down using um, you know, the side of an ink pad, you can use a credit card, you can just take this and put it between your die cut plates and run it through your die cut machine. I don't know, I for some reason like to just use um, a bone folder like this. This one's from Altenew. That way I can also make sure I go around the edges because we really wanna make sure it seals there. All right, so now, see it sticks to your fingers if you touch it, so you just gotta be careful. Tweezers are helpful also. So now I'm gonna peel this up and I'm going slowly making sure that nothing is still on this. There's little bits, but not much. Look at that. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna take that leftover like, uh, release paper, lay it on top and just press down. So it all is transferred really well. And now look at how bright white that is on the acetate. So the nice thing about this is I could have white heat embossed that there, but as you know, um, using, um, Heat embossing on acetate can be tricky unless you have heat resistant acetate, but even this background, it's a lot of embossing. It just really works well on there. So now you have this beautiful uh, transfer on the acetate. Now, if you have a little bit of the transfer hanging off, I just rub my fingers along it, my fingernail. There we go. So there, isn't that pretty? I love acetate cards. If you do um, a search on my YouTube channel on clear cards, I tell you, I have done many clear card videos, especially with the Hero Arts transfer or Hero Arts acetate cards because they're so thick. They make a great card base. You can see it stands up fine on its own. All right. So let's go ahead. Yes, uh, some. Let's see. Questions. Are these all questions here? Yeah. Okay, are the transfers matte or shiny? I would say that's matte. You can see where the white is, it's more matte than the shiny acetate. I would say that it's, I don't know, it's kind of in between. It's hard to describe. I would say more matte. See there, you can see, hold on, let it get in focus. It's not really, I wouldn't say that's shiny. I'd say that's matte. I think that's matte. Will you be able to show us a picture of some of the ornaments you have done? I'll have to find them when I decorate my tree. We've decorated the house, but not a tree yet. So I can look. Uh, maybe I can show that in an Instagram reel sometime. Uh, question, is there a technique for getting transfer to go smoothly on rounded objects? I like to put a little piece of, let's see. Let me just demonstrate here real quick. Say I wanted to put this onto a rounded object. I would take a piece of temporary tape. I don't, 
I'm just gonna pretend, and put it on the top here. Tape that end to the edge, or like to the side of your ornament. Remove the release paper and keep that tape down while you slowly wrap this around and press as you go. And I usually, it might take a couple of tries, but usually you can get it, um, especially if it's just like a sentiment, like you could just do a straight sentiment across it and that would work well too. All right, so let me, I'll do some more questions, um, but uh, let me next demonstrate um, doing this on vellum. Now, somebody did ask, how do you clean your waffle flower grip mat? I use two things. Hero Arts Ultra Clean, because this is main, made for a stamps, cleaning stamps, and that's made of stamp material. And then I use my Hero Arts scrubber. What I spray with this, and then I scrub with this. It will stain like any stamp does, but that means you're using good quality inks, and that means you're using a good quality grip mat. So staining will happen, but it works great nonetheless. And by the way, I use this to clean my stamps whenever I do clean them. And then when this gets kind of inky, I'll go run this under the um, faucet, kind of with the spray on my faucet, and it just washes all the ink away, and then I just let it dry and stick it back on. They do sell replacements of these. So that's the Hero Art Scrubber and how the Ultra Clean. I, how often do I clean my waffle flower grip mat? Very, very rarely. I don't believe in cleaning things unless I have to, as you can see by the dust bunnies in my house. Let's see, what's next? I think I'll do, um, so do the rub-ons come in black and only in black and white? There's gold, silver, I showed at the beginning, these come in lots of different colors. I mean, there are tons, tons, but I'm focusing on white and black today, especially the white, because the whites are my, white are my favorite, because you can get that bright white against a dark color or on acetate or whatever but they come in lots of different colors. All right, now this one, this time I think I'll do like a, let's do a strip. Let's do a strip down it. This is where I should have prepared. Somehow Gina is really good at not preparing and doing well anyways. I don't get it. She is, she's a pro. All right. Yeah, I don't like to clean. It Cleaning's overrated. So I'll save these little pieces for something else. So this is the Oh Holy Night from that same pack. So it's the same pack that I use for here. I'm going to put that on the front of vellum to show you how well it works on vellum. So there you can see how it peels off. And I'm gonna put this kind of center on my card as good as I can go without putting my head in front of the camera, because, you know, there we go. So let's put, now a little bit of that is hanging off the edge of the vellum, so I put my release paper under there, and I'll just press this on. So again, if you're gonna make a card base from vellum, which I have a card base here, I do recommend getting a heavyweight quality vellum. Um, this is Hero Arts, but Simon Says Stamp has great vellum. Altenew has great vellum. A lot of the crafty companies do. Um, a lot of times if you get vellum from like a big chain, it's very thin. Very, very thin. But that, which can be used in many ways, but I wouldn't recommend it for a, a card base. By the way, wouldn't this be fun in a shaker window? So you could do that on acetate, do like a rub on on acetate and then put little shaker bits behind it. That could be really good. All right, so let's start peeling this off. Look at that. Now, I take my release paper, lay it on top, press that down. Now, you can see the little rub-ons hanging off the top here. All I would do, I can't find my Spellbinder scissors again. I keep losing them and then buying new ones and then I lose them. I think Lila's stealing them. I'm gonna blame her. Now you can just rub these off with like a little piece of sanding or just cut with scissors and wipe that off later. And now look at that beautiful vellum with the um, transfer on it. So now you could have done stamping on vellum, like white heat embossing, but you kind of will warp your vellum some. So the, this is just one of the advantages of using a rub on transfer. All right, are there any questions I can ask before I move on or answer before I move on? Oh, yeah. My husband walked in, now I'm nervous. If you want to. 
You can say hi. He's back from the golf course on a cold, you rainy day. You have to tell people that. Oh. <laughs> dear well you're not the only retired one out there a lot of the a lot of folks are retired and they craft with their free time I'm getting ready to go do. but he's getting ready to cook dinner and he wanted me to mention that he wanted he wanted the shout out <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have to prep the acetate prior to applying the rub on no I didn't do anything I did nothing um, ink uh, is using white rub ons this time yep that this is the white rub on, but any of the color ones like these would work really well on the acetate. Be fun to do like cheers or piece on a acetate piece and then have it like a shaker window. So you would have this floating on top of your shaker window and then have shaker bits on the inside. Can you use foil over rub ons? Nora, that's a good question. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it. Do rub ons scratch off? Um, no, I'm scratching here. No, no. Nope. Um, Mike is putting all the questions off on the side and then erasing them as I do them. What do, do you use to write address on dark envelopes? Christina Werner is definitely the person to talk to about envelopes. I put my envelopes in a rigid mailer, so I address that rigid mailer. However, what you can do is stick a white label on the front of it where you write the address. Or you can actually put your colored envelope in a clear sleeve and put your stamps, like your postage, and your address on that. But I would recommend checking out Christina Werner's envelope videos because she can show you all kinds of great things. I don't do much with the envelope except for sometimes decorate the flap. Okay, I'll answer some more questions in a moment. Um, but next, I wanted to just show you, I'm going to complete one of these, somewhat complete one of these, using this Hero Arts Ornament die set. Uh, this is linked in the description below. If you don't see supplies in my description below, just refresh your browser and it should pop up. Oh, I'm throwing things around. Okay, so this is the Hero Arts Ornaments. Now, I did some of these ornaments off screen because I knew I was going to be nervous and afraid to take too much time. So I assembled some off screen. So what I have here are three ornaments that I just made out of scrap pieces of blue and teal cardstock. And what's neat about these ornaments, Hero Arts are really good about um, making their dies so you get good value for what it has to offer. You know, sometimes you get a die set and there's lots of dies in it. They're really good about making it so um, there are less dies, so it's a less price, but you can use it in many ways. So for example, here you in this set, you get the outline dies, and then you also get these that you can put in the middle. So you can have the decorative cut, right? And so this is a, you know, this is a pretty affordable die set. So you can make solid ornaments or you can make with the little cutouts. So what I did is I took a scrap of silver glitter cardstock and I cut solid ornaments from it. Then I used the or used the ornament with the detail dies, and I cut that from scraps of teal and blue cardstock and glued that on top, so that the silver glitter shows through. Now you could really have fun with this and inlay different colors, maybe use some gems. There's a lot of things you can do. I'm going simple, at, at least simple by my standards. And then there is an ornament topper which I did from scraps of silver matte cardstock. I will say that that silver glitter is Altenews glitter paper and this a silver mat is Simon Says Stamp. So I created three ornaments here using these dies. And I also created some solid ornaments. Let me show you those because we're going to layer them on. Um, let me know what you want me to use here in the comments. Should I finish off the acetate or should I finish off the vellum? I don't have time to do both. So let me know what you think. In the meantime, I do have some other pieces that I cut here. These are actually ornaments that I cut from the solid dies, but before I cut them, I put uh, some double-sided uh, adhesive on the back. This is Altenew double-sided adhesive. It comes in a full sheet. So I think it's like eight and a half by 12 or something like that. And this you can put on the back of your cardstock before you die cut and you end up with like a sticker. 
acetate. I'll do the acetate. Okay. Um, so I put this on the back of cardstock and then I die cut these solid shapes. So these are all ornaments that I put the adhesive on the back of before I die cut. That you don't have to do this, but when you're gluing onto acetate, I usually use liquid adhesive, but it takes longer to dry because it doesn't really kind of absorb on the acetate. Um, but, and you could also use tape runner. You could also use adhesive strips, but I knew I'd be nervous and fidgeting and kind of shaking. So I thought it'd be best if I put the adhesive on ahead of time. So again, it's just all to new double-sided adhesive sheets on the back of cardstock, and then I die cut it. So all of these are kind of like stickers over here. So I want to arrange these on here. Let's see, you're gonna have to bear with me here. So this one here has adhesive on the back. Oh, I need to refill my bottle. Dang, I go through that stuff quickly. Okay, and I'm just gluing one on the back so you can see there's some dimension there. And now the back of it is a sticker. Um, somebody mentioned they might be ordering those um, Altenew adhesive sheets. Check their sales because they had great sales. In fact, one day you could get a free pack of adhesive sheets. I don't know if it's today with a certain order, but Altenew's had great sales. So I have a link below to my sales page. Look there. If you're going to place at Altenew, make sure you check their sales or what the free gifts are because they're definitely worth looking at. I think yesterday you could get a pack of these for free. I don't remember what today's free gift is. Well, let me leave that on there. So now I have a sticker on the back of that ornament. So let's see this one here. Yeah, the pre-adhesive, you know, here's the thing. We, oh, why did I do that? I didn't mean to do it. Um, we all have different, I, I said in a video recently, you know, like die cut machines or adhesives are kind of like shoes. Everybody has a different thing they need or want in a shoe. There are people out there, blows my mind, but there are people out there who like wearing high heels. That's great. I wish I did, because I'm short. But, um, th and then there are people who love Uggs. I can't wear Uggs because they make me feel like my foot is suffocating. So I don't like Uggs, but there are a lot of people who swear by them. You know, I like comfortable. Some people need that orthotic, whatever in it. Everybody's got different needs. So, oh, this is the wrong way. Uh, so you really need to think about what your needs are. And that's the same thing with adhesives. Some people like to put this adhesive on the back of a die cut to make it easier to work with. Oh, Karen, I am so nervous. I can hardly stand it. Anyway, um, some people don't like using liquid adhesive. I swear by it. But there are certain times where I use different things. And in this case, I thought it would be fast and easy to show here with the adhesive already on the back. So I have three ornaments here with adhesive on the back. And now I'm gonna place them on my card. Now I want this to, eh, I'll just lay it down. Let's see here. I gotta think about, see this is where I'm, I did not plan. How do I wanna do these? I think I'll do, give me a moment here, sorry. I'm not as good as Gina where I can think and work and talk and all that at the same time. I think I'll do that. So let me start with this one. All right. And if people wonder why I'm so nervous, I, so I am, I like to do my best. And if I'm spending your time, a lot of your time with my long videos, I want to make sure that I'm doing my best. Also, I feel like I think of myself as a teacher and, you know, teachers like to be prepared and really think things out. So that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. You know, everybody is different in how, um, how they share. I think that'll be good. This is, I just, I put a lot of effort into this. If you guys only knew the amount of time that Kathy Zilski, is she still here? She might be napping because it's a Sunday. Um, the number of times we text each other, like trying to help each other out and um, support each other, give each other tips. It's because, you know, this is really important to us that we do um, put, a, put our best foot forward. That's all. And I overthink everything. Ask my brother. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll do like that. So now because I put that adhesive on the back, it's sticking nicely to the front. But look at this. I don't like this showing through. You could totally leave it. 
In fact, maybe I should. But if you wanted to, I think I'll leave it because it doesn't look that bad. You could take another die cut and glue it on the back here so that it looks prettier from the inside. But I think I'm going to leave it. Or a message. Yeah, you could put a message there. But I think I'm going to leave that adhesive showing there. I don't think that's bad. But if you wanted to, you could glue, I had planned it, additional die cuts to line up. So you would have the ornaments on the inside. Uh, if you came in late, we're doing rub-on transfers. And I did a white rub-on transfer on an acetate card. And it's just it's so much fun. And these are Hero Arts transfers. The reason I'm demonstrating Hero Arts, they didn't ask me to do this. The reason I am is because they've kind of, they, I, at least from what I noticed, were the one of the first companies to kind of bring back transfers that used to be big in crafting and now are making a comeback. And I just really like their designs. And plus the people at Hero Arts are amazing. So, all right. Now I do want to think about where I'll write a sentiment on the inside. Now there are things you could do for this. You could die cut maybe like a large circle or something. Let me get a circle back. You could die cut like a white circle and glue that white circle right here on the back. Then you could gl glue a white circle right here and that's where you could write your message. So that's one thing you could do. Maybe I'll do that. Should I do that? I think I'll do that. I think I like that better than what I had planned. So I'm going rogue. Put, put black on here? Totally, yes. You can put color cardstock in here. You can put a mini card inside of it. So you can write your um, personal message and you won't see it through, but I'm gonna show you another way. I'm just gonna die cut a circle here. This is a Hero Arts Circle Infinity die. Um, if you are looking for stacked die sets, kind of like this one, where there's a lot of the same shape and different sizes, Hero Arts and Waffle Flower are, have amazing, amazing die, stacking die sets. All right, so I got one circle there. I need to die cut a couple more. Sorry to do the die cutting now. I didn't think this through. Okay, this time I could have put adhesive on the back of that before I die cut, but this time I'm just gonna use my Gina K tape runner here. Sadly, I think this is about to run out, so it'll probably run out on me. Now I'm going to put this, so I have adhesive on the back of this. I'm going to line this up. So the adhesive is facing up towards the camera right now. But I'm gonna line it up behind my ornaments where I want them to be. I, think I want it like that. And then I'll press it down. And now look at, I have a spot right there where I can write my personal message. But I wanna make sure you can't see through there to the white, right? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip this over, put some adhesive on here behind my ornaments. So there's some adhesive right here on the back of those ornaments. I'll take another circle die. This has nothing on it. I'll lay it to line up with the one we've already glued in place. So I'm just laying this here, close my card on it. And now that's glued there. So now you have a place where you can write a message there and it doesn't show through to the front. You could have also glued a mini card in here. So many things you could have done. Again, I mentioned that um, I have a ton of videos on creating acetate cards. If you go to my YouTube channel and just search on clear cards, lots of ideas will come up. I have never done on my videos the transfers on acetate. This is the first time I've done it, but as far as like different ways to create a clear card, I have lots of those videos. All right, so now I see, you can see that adhesive through. I don't like how that looks. See, I'm, I'm an overthinker. And I also want to be able to stamp Handmade by Jennifer on it. So I have yet another circle die cut. And I can lay that right on the back. And now everything lines up. There you go. All right. So this is the, the card that I envisioned, but I need to add a sentiment. So you, if you guys could see the mess here. Oh my heavens, now I gotta find it. Hang on, hang on here. Are there any more questions, Mike, that I can answer while I'm looking? Here it is. All right, will rub-ons work on leather? I think so, I would think so. 
Uh, what did you use to adhere ornament pieces together? I use Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. If you're gonna glue cardstock onto glitter paper, I like using a liquid adhesive because it gets in the nooks and crannies of the glitter and will really dry there, but it'll take a little longer to dry on the glitter. But I'm, I, I have trust issues with some adhesives, but I fully trust Gina K Connect. Um, Okay, so somebody said that Hero Arts is giving away the stamp set and enamel dots. Yep, that's their their sale on their site. If you use my code, you get the stamp set, the enamel dots, and the stencil. Can you put that image up again? I'm gonna have Mike put that up again. Just so you, so there it is. If you shop the, one of the links below and use the code Jennifer23, you get those three things there. It's like a, almost a $30 value. You spend 35, dollars on whatever you want, maybe transfers or something, and you get the $30 for free. There's any issues with that Hero Ocean. Yeah, Hero is amazing, so they will help you if you have any questions. All right, let's see. I'm going to do... I'm going to do... What do you think? I'm going to do Warm Wishes. Now, this is another fun thing that you can do. Is the SAT for your own? These acetate note cards are Hero Arts. I have them in my supply list below. Um, and they come folded, cut and folded to three, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And what's the weight? What's the weight of that? I have no idea, but it's the thickest acetate I've found in crafting. I don't know. Um, the code information should be below, and it's also on my sales page. This The code is Jennifer23 and ends tonight. I'm sorry. I meant to do this live earlier, but you know, I have no excuse. I just didn't get it done. All right, so I have a piece here. This is an excellent way to make sentiment strips. Now I've, I use sentiment strips on my cards all the time, stamp sentiment strips. And I know that there are, it can be tricky to get it cut just right. I've shown many different ways to try to get your sentiment lined up and get it straight. But I thought I would show you um, what, how the rub-ons are really helpful for that. So I have a strip of cardstock that will match my project here. You can do this from any scraps. And you can place these sentiments very easily onto a strip. So this will be a white transfer with black letters, and I'm gonna do that on blue paper. So you'll only see the blue around the edges. Do we have to add the three items to the cart with Jennifer's code? I don't think so, no. You just, it'll automatically happen. Okay, so I'm gonna place this right up against this edge of this cardstock strip. Now, I gotta get my head in the way, sorry. Don't count my grays. All right, I'm gonna place that down. And then press it down. Always hold the clear release part of the acetate so it doesn't move on you. Press that down really well. And then so now we have the white with the black letters on blue cardstock, and that will look really nice on there. Now, you know, you could have done that look with stamps. You could have stamped on with black ink on white cardstock and trimmed that down and then mat it with blue, but man, this is so much faster. And if you have trouble lining up stamps on sentiment strips, this is definitely much easier. And you can use whatever little scrap you have left. All right, now, you know me, if I'm gonna add something to a cart, I want some something behind it for dimension, but also for stability, because this is gonna stretch over my ornaments. So I have, I need to refill. I have that leftover piece of the strip, so it's the same width or height or whatever. I'm gonna glue that to the back, trim off the excess, and then do that again. So now this sentiment strip will be stronger so it won't get squished when it goes through the mail. All right, so now we have our little strip and it has some dimension to it. All right, so now this you can add anywhere. I think I'm gonna add it. Um, see, this is what I, why I don't like, I, I'm not good at lives, I have to, like this, I would overthink for a long time. I'd probably take a picture of it and send it to my friend Heather and say, which, where should I put it? And she would help me decide. I think I'm gonna put it right here. Um, a lot of times in, 
in my videos, people will ask me, why do I put my sentiment on top of things? Like I'm gonna be covering up some of the ornament. The reason I do that is I'm not good at design. Um, that's Kathy and Christina, Kathy Zilski and Christina's cup of tea. But for me, I my eye is happiest when um, the sentiment is the, at the focal point of the card. So if I put it down here, it's kind of, it's not at the focal point, And then the sentiment becomes like a secondary element. I want it to be the focal point. So I like to put it, kind of ground it on my focal point of the card. That's just what I do. But you can put it wherever you want. You really, you could, in fact, you could do that white rub on right down here and it would go on top of this, of the, the rub on that you have there. You can layer your rub ons. Now, because there's a step here, see this is lower than this and I want it to go across, just on the one edge, I'm gonna put some foam squares. So put those on there. And then on the rest of it, I'll put liquid adhesive. Here's another thing that I like to do. Even though this is already sticky, right? Because they're foam adhesive, I like to put some liquid adhesive on it. That way, I can place this down and wiggle it till I have it in the right place and then it'll dry nicely. So like I can place this down and kind of move it, see? I can move it until I'm happy with it. I think I want it to be kind of off like that. And then press it down. And there we have our sentiment on there. So we have that card and we have this card just showing some different ways to use transfers. Now, again, there are other companies that are coming up with transfers too. Um, I've ordered some to try out. I just have a lot of these uh, Hero Arts ones because I think they're fantastic. I use the kind of basic ones, the white and the black, but do know, I mean, there are, oh, let's see, where's the butterfly one? Oh, look at these bows for Christmas. Um, Lots of different ones. There's some that are good for like colorful mixed media. I can't find the butterfly. Oh, look at these, here it is. The butterflies and the ornaments are fantastic. So if you also like the look of coloring, like colored images and you struggle with it like me, this is great for getting that look, you know, without having to do the coloring. This would be beautiful on an acetate card. And then you could just do like a circle die cut with a sentiment on it and keep it very simple because there would be so much beauty and interest in the rub on on the acetate. Does that make any sense? Did Kathy, Kathy Zilski sent me a super chat so I could go buy wine. I'll tell you what I am doing. I don't have wine yet, but I have a wine glass and I have LaCroix in it so I can pretend it's a, a fruit salad, you know. So thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. All right, so there are the two cards that I had planned for you today. Keep in mind, I did do show that you can do it on vellum too. I just didn't finish that card off. But these are just different things you can do with any kind of rub on transfer. Here we did a resist. Here we did it placement exactly where we want it. Here we used it on vellum. You can see it still stays clear or see through. Here we did on acetate and then placed it right onto a sentiment strip and got really good placement. So those are just some of the fun things that you can do with rub on transfers. Uh, dig in your stash. If you're one of those who used these a long time ago, bring them out. Hopefully they'll still work. I think they should. Um, I don't uh, think there's any reason they wouldn't. I will say, I do feel like this new generation of transfers are really good quality, really good quality. All right, I have time for just a few questions. Are there any questions I can answer here? And then I will um, let everybody go because I'm almost at an hour and a half. Give away, give oh, giveaway, yes. Okay, um, we'll do a giveaway. We'll do three giveaways. Mike's gonna pick some winners. Um, I don't know where I put it. Uh, the three giveaways are for, here it is. One person will get this stamp set and die. One person will get this card and one person will get this card. So uh, to for your chance, leave a, just leave a comment in the chat. Yeah. Just leave a comment. He'll randomly pick some people. So I will answer some questions while you leave some comment, uh, leave a comment and he'll randomly pick somebody. All right, can we win um, one of your cards today by leaving a comment? Yep, he's gonna pick some winners here soon. Do you, um, let's see, how long do the rub-ons last in the package? My old ones never lasted that long and I loved autumn leaves. 
I don't know why they wouldn't last long. It seems like they should. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know why they wouldn't. Maybe, it, maybe if they were in heat or they're just way super old. I haven't had any problems with any of these. Can you tell me where you purchased this static wand you used with your shaker cards? So that in a different video, I showed um, anti-static powder tools. Um, when you do shaker cards and you have tape, foam tape around the inside, some of your little bits can, the shaker bits can get stuck to the walls. So I used uh, some anti-static powder tool. This is from This Calls for Confetti. It's a company and I got mine at Simon's Says Stamp. And this you can just easily go around the inside. The other tool that I like, what I use for all anti-static, is um, this from uh, the Rabbit Hole Designs. I think this is a great tool. I like that it's not not baby powder or whatever, which I, I try to avoid. It works really well. You can refill it. You can protect it. I just, I'm really happy with this. So these are just two that you could use anti-static, uh, 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 get anti-static from. Um, I think, oh, thank you to Christine and Kenzie for the super chats. I, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, I'm just glad you're here. I really am. Um, uh, Claire said, I work mostly in five by seven. Is there a good company to go for, for nesting dies that fit those proportions? Yes. Waffle flower. Waffle flower has stacking rectangle dies for an A2 card or for the five by seven. So, cause the proportions are different. You're right. Waffle flower does have those. At least they used to. I'm pretty certain they still have them. And I know Waffle Flower has uh, a sale right now. In fact, I think there's an exclusive code for Waffle Flower over on my sales page also. So um, be sure to check there before you do any shopping. Um, I think, I think, impress nails. oh, Impress Nails. These are um, from a company called M Impress Manicures. And that's what these are. No, I don't paint my nails. Nail polish smell gives me a headache. That's it. Okay. So I think that's all of the questions. Uh, I really appreciate you visiting here today for joining me. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to go get a real glass of wine. <laughs> my ears are red. Oh my goodness. Anyway, um, I'm glad you joined me and uh, be sure to do you put the code up again. Yeah. For Hero Arts. And I need to announce the... Oh, Mike has to announce the winner. I got to learn this better. Okay. So there is the code for Hero Arts. It is, um, if you spend $35, use the code Jennifer23 by midnight Pacific tonight, you get those three products, which are worth $30. It's a nice deal. Um, and thank you to Kristen and Liz for Super Chats. I appreciate it. I really do. I thank you. I got to get not as awkward at saying thank you, but I, I greatly appreciate it. Now, Mike is picking three winners. Are you ready? He's yeah. randomly picking. Let's first do the winner of the stamp set and the coordinating dies. You ready? Now the person I picked, I think, left. hold on. Oh, the person you picked left. That happens a lot. It happens uh, sometimes. I get it. I would leave too. Um, maybe they did it. Uh, and if you are right. the winner, you Good. just email via my website and uh, help at jennifermaguireinc.com. Email me your name and address. Okay. Okay, who's the first winner? Um, to reload. Tech issues. Yes, I have tech issues. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness, Mike. Okay, okay. The first winner is... Give him grace, too, not just me. Uh, De... Who is it? Debbie Lewis. Debbie Lewis. So Debbie Lewis will get the stamp set and coordinating dies. You just need to um, email at uh, email help at Jennifer McGuire Inc. with the K dot com and email us your address and we'll send you this. The next person gets this card. Who's that? Okay. Um, so I also got to make sure they're still here. Can, can... If they're not here, we can always go back to. And this one, oh, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it so much. We need to come up with a faster way to pick winners. Gina and Tom do it with such grace. Lisa 
Reyes, R E Y E S. Lisa Reyes, R Y what? R E Y E S. R E Y E S. Lisa, you get this card, so email help at jennifermaguireinc.com, your address. And then the last one. This. Maybe, maybe one of the people I picked out. Maybe. Why is that not wanting to focus? I'm ah, sorry. Okay, good. Mary Lou Rivick. Mary Lou Rivick. You win this card. So all three of you, please email through my website, help at jennifermaguireinc.com, or just go to my website and click contact us and send us your address. I think that's it. I, um, I thank you for spending this time with me. If you're doing any shopping this weekend, especially to today and tomorrow, there's a bunch of sales that will end tonight um, that were like Black Friday that extended, but there will also be new sales tomorrow. And these little businesses are being very generous during a busy time. You know, they do these sales that are very generous, which means they're going to get a lot of orders and they're going to have to fill those orders during this busy time. So it's really very generous of them to do this. And a lot of these companies are just a few people that work there, sometimes just one. So I really appreciate that, that they're offering these things. I have a sales list with tons of sales uh, and also lots of exclusive offers like the one that's on the screen here. So be sure to check that out if you're doing any shopping. And I think that's it. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate I appreciate the super chat. All right, have a wonderful day. Uh, and I, I wish you all lots of blessings in the upcoming holiday season. I know it can be difficult for some, so I'm holding space for you. All right, thank you for watching.